Have you ever seen mysterious rings of mushrooms? They're called fairy rings and they've inspired countless legends and myths. Today we are going to learn more about this enchanting natural phenomena and discover who the real fairies are, besides me of course. 3, 2, 1, let's go! Fairy rings are naturally occurring circular or arc-like formations. They can consist of mushrooms, lush green grass or dry grass. These rings appear in grassy areas such as lawns, fields or forests. Fairy rings were thought to be places where fairies danced at night, trapping those who entered. Some legends say fairies used mushrooms as umbrellas or cables. In German-speaking Europe, known as Hexenringe, they were believed to be scorched by witches dancing on Walpurgis night. Others attributed them to dragons' fiery breath. But my favorite legend claims these circles mark the places where the devil churned his butter. According to these tales, devils might assist maids with milking cows or churning butter. The diabolic churn scorched the ground, leaving the mark. Though one wonder what stain the milk would be after spending a night in a such a churn. Natural explanations <laughs> were no less great. One theory blames cattle, which gather around hay bales in a circle during winter, uh, enriching the grass with high quality manure, leading to lush growth. Another theory suggests amorous hedgehogs trample the grass while chasing each other. A subterranean variation involves moths racing in circles underground with their waist promoting grass growth. A charming explanation dating back to the 1700s. A real explanation was found only in 1792. William Withering discovered a white cotton-like mass under a fairy ring and identified it as a fungal mycelium. That was Marasmus aridus, known now as the fairy ring mushroom. This species is one of about 60 different types that create fairy rings. All we need is a spore for fairy ring formation. Spore lands on the ground and mycelia start growing. Mycelia grow equally in all directions, forming a circle. As it grows, the central part eventually dies off, leaving only a ring of growing mycelium. Recent studies show that fungi likely produce self-toxic compounds and die. That's why it's fairy rings and not fairy discs. Fungi can suppress or stimulate grass growth. There are two main reasons why grass dies. Hydrophobicity. Fungal mycelium fills most of the soil pores, preventing water from reaching the plant roots. Phytotoxicity, fungi release toxins such as cyanide. For grass stimulation, fungi release digestive enzymes into the ground to break down their food, which then they absorb. Fungi are sloppy eaters, and part of the food they digest is consumed by plants. This process stimulates the surrounding vegetation, leading to the characteristic growth patterns seen in fairy rings. Nitrogen is especially important. Plants cannot use any nitrogen, but only specific forms. For a better understanding, let's look at the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is a natural process in which nitrogen moves between the atmosphere, soil, plants, animals, and microorganisms. Here are the key steps. Nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen gas from the atmosphere is converted into ammonia by bacteria found in the soil or in the roots of certain plants. 
assimilation. Plants absorb ammonia from the soil and use them to make proteins and other compounds. Animals then eat the plants and assimilate the nitrogen into their own bodies. Ammonification. When plants and animals die or excrete waste, decomposers like bacteria or fungi break down the organic matter, releasing ammonia back into the soil. And because of the available nitrogen, plants grow lush and green. Nitrification. Ammonia is converted into nitrites and then into nitrates by soil bacteria. Denitrification. Denitrifying bacteria in the soil convert nitrates back into nitrogen gas, which is released into the atmosphere, completing the cycle. Nitrogen is good, but there was something else. Scientists were looking for specific molecules that promote growth. They were looking for real fairies, and they found them. Scientists have found that fungi might also release plant hormone like phytostimulants. Because these molecules perform real magic, they name them fairy chemicals. Studies with Lepista sordida discovered three compounds 2 other hypoxanthin and 2 other 8 oxohypoxanthin. These compounds promote growth mediated by glutathione as transferase. BBI and aquaporin. GST and BBI help plants cope with stresses such as temperature, salt, and infection. Aquaporins transport ammonia ammonium ions, which are important nutrients. The third fairy is imidazole for carboxamide. This compound was found to suppress growth and cause dry grass. Interestingly, all these compounds are naturally present in plants. That means that studying fairy rings has led scientists to discover a new family of plant hormones. Fairy chemicals have the potential to perform real miracles. Increasing crop yields, improving crop resistance, and solve the world food problem. I hope the video was helpful. You might also enjoy other folklore videos diving into the mystery of the devil's garden or witch's love potions. And see you next video. Bye bye.